We good? OK, perfect. The what? What? Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that after I'm done. I'm almost done. So the next thing, I, I have a question for you guys. Um, what if, my question is, what if I wanted to say, how long is it going to take for you to double your money? So use compound it continuously. How long will it take for you to double your money? So if your initial investment is 5,200, that means your end result is going to be 10,400. Everybody follows? Equals E, I'm sorry, equals 5,200 times E to the 0 0.06 times T. So anybody have any ideas how we're going to solve for T? Yes? Logarithms. What, what logarithms? Okay. Why would you pick ln? Because the t is it doesn't have an e, and the t and then the power of the using the right. logarithm. But why use logarithms? How are logarithms related to exponential? So it's the inverse operation. Yes. Yeah, so think about what we did at the beginning, right? They're inverses of each other. Now, if you don't forget that because you're biting your lanyard, let's go and take a look at the graph. Our exponential function, if you guys remember, looked like this. Boop, boop y equals e to the x. Follow me? Yes? We know that it crossed at 1 comma 0. Remember, guys, this is what I taught last class period. Yeah. Guys, I'm telling you, just follow with me. You'll have the last of the time. I'll give you plenty of time. Just wait. It's OK. Don't just put it down. You'll have plenty of time. So if we are going to reflect this to find the inverse, again, we don't know what the inverse is. Or at least we're pretending we don't. We know that this is going to cross now at, oops, that's 0, 1. At 1, comma 0. And it looks something like this. right? That's what the inverse graph is. So there's a function for that that represents that. And that's what we were getting with Daria. And I'm not, I don't want to get too deep into this, because obviously, if we were actually teaching a true lesson or a true chapter on logarithms, I'd spend more time talking about logarithms. But I just want you guys to understand, e to the x, the inverse, what undoes e to the x is the inverse, which in this case is ln of x. So ln of x is your inverse of e. It undoes your e to the x. Remember, remember when we plugged in the function into its inverse, and what did you get back? You got, what did you get back? x. So if I take, if I say, if I say um, y, is equal to e to the x, and y inverse is equal to ln of x, what happens when I plug in, um, what happens when I plug in my function into my inverse? When I plug in ln of e to the x, what am I going to get? I'm going to get x. And isn't that what we want? We want whatever is going to be isolated. So let's look over here. First thing let's do, first thing we're going to want to do whenever we're solving an exponential equation, isolate the exponent. So the first thing I'll do is divide by 5,200. And I get 2 equals e to the 0 0.06 t. Now, I'm not solving for x in this case. I'm solving for t. But I want to undo e to the 0 0.06 power. right? i got to undo that. So to undo that, I will take the ln. Right? Remember what I did over here, guys? What did I do? I subtracted a 3 on both sides, correct? Right? Remember that equation? I like you know, x plus 3 equals 5. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. If you're going to take the ln on the right side, you've got to take ln on the left side. So we have the ln of 2 is equal to ln of e gives you 0 0.06t. Divide by 0 0.06, divide by 0 0.06. t is approximately ln of 2 divided by, and you get? 11.55. So how long does it take, roughly? How long does it take for us to double our money? 11 and a half years. So 11 years and six months, right? If you rounded it to the nearest full year, it would be 12, right? So last thing, we're gonna, last thing I'm going to come up with is there's actually a trick. There's a shortcut with this. Because if you guys do the ln of 2, you get 0.69, OK? If you multiply 0.69 times 100, you would have 69. But 69 is not a very divisible number. Or basically, look what I'm doing. 
I'm taking my ln of 2, and I'm dividing it by my interest rate. Do you guys see that? If I actually just multiplied this by a rate of 10, ln of 2 is 69, 0.69 something. But if I just multiply that by 100, I would have 69. And then 6 would be my actual interest rate, 6%. Would you guys agree with me? But is 69 a very good divisible number? No. no. What's kind of the next number that's like really, really divisible? Even better. Even better. 72. 72 is a really, really divisible number. If you guys do the prime factorization tree of 72, you'll see it's very, very divisible. Okay, More divisible than 70 and 68. So there's a rule that we can create then for that. So what we call this, since 69 is so close to 72, we just call this the rule of 72. And the rule of 72 basically says if you take 72 divided by your interest rate as a percentage, that's going to equal the number of years to double your money. So, and does that work? Take 72 divided by 6. 72 divided by 6, put it, think about it in your head. How long is that? 12. If you're sitting there talking to your friends or you have to make a financial decision, is that good enough? Is that close enough for you to make some kind of decision? Yes, right? It's going to take 12 years. Hey, the higher your interest rate, Right? The higher your interest rate, the shorter time it's going to take to double your money. The lower your interest rate, the more time it's going to take. Right? Yes? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the rule of 72.